everybody, I'm Zelda Master, and today I want to talk about the new information regarding Breath of the Wild's DLC. So, for those who don't know, Nintendo recently revealed the information for DLC Pack 1 that will be coming out this summer for Breath of the Wild. And I'll be honest, it is awesome. Like, it actually surprised me with uh, the content we'll be getting in DLC Pack 1. Because from what we knew, Nintendo did say they'll be adding a new hard mode, a new Shiki Slate feature, and a trial of sorts. But I didn't expect to also get new outfits, a new way to hunt down Korok seeds, and a new way to travel. So all of these additional features seem really worth it, and I wish they made its way into the final game. But I'm not complaining, I just feel bad for those who don't want to get the DLC or don't plan on getting the DLC and will be missing out on some pretty cool features. But to get into these features, let's start off with the most interesting and that is the Trial of Sword. Now the Trial of the Sword is uh, pretty much a trial of sorts, I mean it should be no surprise. And it's similar to the Savage Labyrinth from The Wind Waker or the Cave of Ordeals from Twilight Princess where you have to take on a bunch of waves of enemies. This time it's 45 rooms instead of 50. But, the reward at the end of this is the true power of the Master Sword will awaken. Yes, the way the Master Sword glows when taking on any of the Ganon, like, you know, evil within Hyrule, well, it will always glow like that. So that means your Master Sword will always do 60 damage and have amazing durability until, you know, it runs out of energy because this trial will, you know, unlock that true power to where any enemy, the Master Sword, truly shines. And I feel like that's what we needed from the beginning of Breath of the Wild. But it's cool that we have to do a trial for it. It just sucks that we had to wait for DLC to do a trial like this. Because as we know from every other Zelda game, the Blade of Evil's Bane or the sword that seals darkness is a indestructible sword that... You know, it can really withstand, you know, I, it, just, it has good durability, but in Breath of the Wild, it doesn't. So, I'm, I'm really excited to actually have my Master Sword truly powered up at all times. But, this trial here is said to be located in a sacred um, place, and obviously, if you couldn't tell by the screenshot, it's most likely going to be Korok Forest, where you originally got... The master sword so where you get the sword is where you are trialed to take on the trial of the sword so yeah overall really cool idea and i cannot wait to take on this trial and let me just add something i didn't notice at first and that is of a screenshot of link standing in front of the pedestal of the master sword with the option being to place the master sword back into it that's possibly gonna tap link into this trial mode where he must overcome the trial with no equipment just what you know he has in every single round it makes a lot of sense for the trial to be taken in this like mental state when he puts in the master sword he's like teleported i think that's really cool and i feel like this screenshot reveals exactly what the sacred place is and how to use it i mean the sacred place was more than obvious it was korak forest this screenshot kind of confirms how we're gonna access this trial which is really cool for what it is so where you get the sword is where you are trialed to take on the trial of the sword so yeah overall really cool idea and i cannot wait to take on this trial on top of that we'll also be getting hard mode which uh you know we knew of and sadly there is no original hard mode in the game even though nintendo at first claimed for it to be a new hard mode we don't even have a hard mode in breath of the wild so this is just hard mode but the hard mode we'll be getting unlike every other zelda game where we were given hero mode at least the more recent remakes we were given hero mode and uh in those games all the enemies did was double damage and i guess they did mirror the game for twilight princess but it wasn't much and same thing with you know uh, Scarred Sword, all of those games, you know, enemies do double damage, and there's really very little alter to the game. It's not like Master Quest, where the game is completely changed up. Well, in Breath of the Wild, enemies will obviously do more damage because they're going to be much stronger from the beginning, uh, as Nintendo is claiming that the enemies will be uh, powered up by one. And I'm assuming if you played Breath of the Wild, you know what that means. So from Red Bakublins, they'll be blue. From blue, they'll be silver. And from silver, they'll be even stronger than silver. I'm really excited to see what overpowers silver enemies. But yes, there will be enemies stronger than the strongest enemies. As well as uh, we will find enemies in the sky. Yes, you're going to find a bunch of random, like, just floating platforms in the sky with enemies and chests that you can find, which I think is really interesting. Uh, I do wish that they added something to the, uh, you know, 
I guess you could say the Sheikah shrines or anything with maybe even the Korok seeds, but I feel like I guess it's asking too much to, you know, change its placement or anything. It would have been cool if they reversed the world to where it had it mirrored making it much more confusing to explore kind of like how they've done that in other zelda games it would have been cool to mirror hyrule in breath of the wild but we don't know maybe they didn't even uh you know tell us that information but that's also something we'll be getting which is yeah the well-known hard mode uh on top of that is the sheikah slate feature and this sheikah slate feature is pretty interesting though i don't really think i'm going to be using it too much i'm probably only going to use it just to see it for what it is and that is the hero's path mode and now the hero's path mode pretty much tracks where have you where you've walked it reminds me of like map my walk if you uh, have that app on your phone and you go walking and whatnot that's pretty much what it is it's a map my walk for hyrule uh you can easily map where you're going see all of that within the past 200 hours of gameplay see the areas you visited most and it will be highlighted in this green which is really interesting how it works but i mean I have a feeling this is only meant for like, you know, checking where you mainly explored and then going to explore areas where there, it isn't highlighted in green, so you know where to explore where you haven't. But I feel like with the pins and with everything else in this game, this, you know, this new feature isn't really going to be that uh, cool or really helpful, but it'd be nice to track overall the, uh, the amount we, you know, do within the game and overall see where we've been so i'm excited just to look at it for what it is but i don't think i'll be using it as a tip or anything like that overall new feature sounds cool so uh, yeah i'm excited for this new hero's path mode but on top of it and this feature is uh, really really cool though i feel like if you have every shrine within the game then you know maybe it won't be as helpful but i feel like this really will help out people who are new to the game, new to Hyrule, and overall just trying to get around without too many Sheikah Shrines unlocked. And that is the Travel Medallion. Yes, somewhere in the world you will find a chest that has a Travel Medallion inside of it. And this medallion, you can only register up to one of them within Hyrule, but it will work as a fast travel point where you can teleport anytime to a Travel Medallion and you can place it anywhere on the ground. It seems really helpful. I mean, I'm trying to think of an area that maybe it will be useful to me, like an area I frequently visit for uh, farming or something. But uh, for those who like find a shrine and maybe need like certain arrows or need something and can't actually unlock it or hear the Sheikah sensor going off, but don't have the equipment to keep looking. Well, yeah, this travel medallion will be perfect. You just set it. You know, head back, you know, get ready, and then come back and teleport to your little checkpoint, which will be the travel medallion. So I love this feature. Really cool. Sadly, it wasn't in the final game. We're only going to get it now, but still. Uh, on top of this feature, we're also going to be getting new outfits. And uh, I say the outfits are really, really awesome. Like, I did not expect to even get new outfits, let alone how... Uh, you know, awesome these ones are. Again, they're references to previous Zelda games and, you know, other Zelda references. It's nothing original, but you know what? That's what we want. Let's be honest. Everyone wants that nice nostalgia, you know, you get when putting on different outfits or just overall reminiscing of previous Zelda games in this one big expansion of a Zelda game. Like, Breath of the Wild has so many references of every Zelda game. I love the fact that we're getting more DLC with more references to outfits. Now, to start off, we have the Majora's Mask. Yes, you can physically obtain Majora's Mask. Now, I have a feeling it might be a replica, or whatever we read, the description will be. I mean, it, it still won't uh, give you the exact info you want. It might say, oh, a hero, uh, you know, saved. I, I don't know. I don't really know what the information will be for it. Obviously, it doesn't make sense canonly. Like, it, yeah, it, it won't make sense in the story, but look, it, as long as we're getting it, we're getting it. That's how I see it. Like, all of these new additions, they may not make sense in the story or how Link obtained it or any of that, but, I mean, the fact that in the game, I'm happy for it. So, yeah, none of the tunics make sense. I just thought I'd kind of point that out for those who feel like, you know, they don't really fit within the game. Personally, I feel like anything fits. If it wasn't a Zelda game, it fits in this one. Uh, at least a, a main Zelda game, not like the CDI ones. But anyways, uh, Majora's Mask. Yes, you can get Majora's Mask. I have no idea what the function will be for this one. I wonder if it will reuse old ones we have or if it will give us a new ability. Probably reuse old ones. Maybe this one will just give you a little amount of armor as well as... I can't really think of what Majora's Mask would give you. There's no like 
uh, defensive buff against uh, the Calamity Ganon or the Malice. I think uh, it would have been cool if that's what it gave you, but you don't really have that. It could be like more Guardian Resist, but that'd be asking for too much. I'm overall curious to see what buff this gives you. Maybe it glows at night, maybe it makes you run faster at night, but alongside this Dark Mask, we also get Midna's Helmet, which, as we know, yes, also isn't really the most sacred of things to get within the game, but it's awesome that you can get it, and I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Midna is one of my favorite Zelda characters of all time. I can't wait to rock her helmet uh, the way it is. It looks so awesome on Link. So, again, you can also get that. No idea what it will give you, but I'm sure it will give you some sort of armor, and hopefully it gives you a cool buff for what it is, because it'd be weird just to wear it as it is, but... And not have anything beneficial from it is what I mean. Because why just have a mask give you little defense and not give you anything else, you know? It'd be a waste. But on top of that, we have the Phantom Armor. And uh, the Phantom Armor is what I'm most excited for in terms of armor. It is Princess Zelda's, uh, you know, version of the Phantoms. Now, what I mean by that is we've seen these Phantoms in Spirit Tracks. And, and Phantom Hourglass, actually, obviously Phantom Hourglass, but my point is that when Zelda would take over Phantom in Spirit Tracks, she would, you know, cause the armor to get this weird, like, pink tint, and then the Triforce Crest would appear from behind, and it looked so nice, and I love the way Zelda was in it. It reminded me of, like, the Zelda version of FMA with, like, Ed and Elle, Link and Zelda. I don't know, I really liked it for what it was, especially with the glowing eyes. It looks very identical, and now now Link and Breath of the Wild will be able to rep it. Now it doesn't really reference anything of that, I don't really think it's going to give you, uh, I don't know what kind of feature or what kind of ability it will give you as well, but it looks so awesome. Like, yeah, Phantom Armor will probably my, be my favorite set once it does come out because it, yeah, it just looks so nice and I can't wait to actually see it in game. Obviously these are like concept arts for how they will look, but I mean the game looks so good that will look very similar to these concept arts. Anyways, on top of uh, that, we have, I want to say the silliest outfit we're going to be getting within the DLC, and that is Tangle's outfit. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally Link in these green tights, you know. It's pretty much Tangle for you, but as Link, you can see Link dress up all goofy-like, which I think is, I guess, pretty cool. Um, Again, the only thing I'm really wondering is what the special ability will be, like the bonus set for both the Phantom Armor and Tingle's outfit, and then also what kind of buff you might be getting from the Majora's Mask and Midna's Helm. Uh, like, yeah, all of these new sets look so interesting. They're all callbacks to previous Zelda games. You know, Tingle from every game that Tingle's in, the Phantom Armor from Spirit Tracks, Majora's Mask from Majora's Mask, and the Midna's Helm from Twilight princess yes awesome much better than all of the green tunics i love how you can swap between green tunics but these look yeah just much more interesting and you actually can collect them within hyrule like you're not gonna use an amiibo they're not gonna fall from the sky it's none of that rng uh crap oh there's gonna be apparently eight chests throughout hyrule where you have to locate all of these new items so you're gonna have to explore it even more which is really exciting and on top of that another chest appears throughout hyrule though this isn't armor it's more so a mask that will help you out and that is the korok mask yes the korok mask which i feel like honestly should have been in the original game is a mask that will allow you to just find korok seeds much easier and essentially what it does is it will shake like the mask itself shakes when you're near a hidden korok location which um i guess is interesting like i like the fact that that does exist, I just feel like Nintendo waited a little too long. Like, the first DLC pack we're getting this, I'm not complaining. I have uh, almost have every single one without using a guide. But if I had this right now, I would have every single one without a guide. And that's what I want to do. The Korok mask would have been perfect to find all of them uh, without a guide. And I feel like Nintendo is making this mask to make it easier for those to, you know, look for them without you know, actually pinpointing where they are on a guide or anything like that because it's really fun to explore and to find them yourself a lot more rewarding. It's just the reward itself isn't worth it, Like nine, and there's 900 in total. So, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have an easier way to look for them, and now that there is, uh, I, can, I only can imagine that a lot of other people will start looking for Korok Seeds more often because 
Uh, from what I see, at least, no one really cares about the Korok seeds within this game, and it makes sense. Once you upgrade your, uh, you know, weapon, shield, and bow stash, at least to a certain amount to where you don't want any more weapons. And I mean, once you reach 400 and something Korok seeds, you don't have to spend any more Korok seeds because you would have maxed those out so i mean yeah korok seeds at least half of them are useless and i really hope nintendo puts those to use and maybe the final reward you get for all the korok seeds and maybe you can also trade that piece of crap for something more i don't know or maybe that will be used as a token to have them all at least let me spend the other 400 korok seeds i have extra you know i really hope nintendo does implement uh, some sort of use for them. We have the Korok mask, so now there's even more of an incentive to look for these Korok seeds, but yeah, we'll see. Maybe this DLC will have some sort of secret, maybe on Makar Island. I feel like Makar Island might hold, you know, some sort of Korok NPC that will appear, and maybe you can spend the Korok seeds you have remaining on something else instead of going to Head Stew, because he no longer needs it. Overall, I would really like to see Makar Island used for something since it's been pretty isolated within the game nor is there even a Korok seed on it and I have a feeling Nintendo will put it to use with the DLC. We'll see overall I'm just really excited to play in the Phantom Armor and unlock all of these sets to expect in our 100% Let's Play to obviously get all of these armor sets, take on the Trial of the Swords, try out hard mode of course which I'll probably do a playthrough of and we're gonna use the Sheikah feature, the travel medallions, the Korok Mask, everything. We're, do we're gonna obviously go through all of this when it's actually out. Same goes for the upcoming DLC. Overall, expect tons more Breath of the Wild related content. I'm really excited and this DLC has me so much more pumped for what's to come. So let me know what you guys think of this DLC. Uh, what you think maybe the winter DLC will be, like more outfits, hopefully there's more, hopefully more references like this. I prefer these references to older Zelda games. Um, like it just, yeah, it's really nice how I just feel like every Zelda game is coming to one with Breath of the Wild with all of these like small references. So I'm overall just really excited for all of this and yeah, you guys let me know what you guys think and uh, yeah, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Zelda Master and I'll see you all in another video where, you know, hopefully I'm playing the game and not just talking about it. All right, I'll see you all then. Bye. <laughs>